So now we have the rain in and it's working almost like we want it to. We've got it in there, we've got the particles set up and we can play around with the attributes to change the way it looks and also how it reacts with the other geometry in the scene. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shift our focus and look at the other element of this tutorial and that is to create the puddle that she's going to be splashing into. So let's stop this simulation for now and just so that we can focus on things a little quicker I'm going to hide the hair and I'm also going to hide the rain which is in this uh, display layer here. That just means that when we're calculating the bifrost later it'll just speed things up a little bit because it's not trying to calculate the rain as well as the bifrost simulation. Let's return back to frame zero as well. If we open up our outliner you can see here that I've added in a I've just grouped the uh, the rain elements into a nice little group added it to this display layer just to keep things tidy. You'll also notice we have a bifrost group here and in here you'll see a puddle container object and a puddle emitter object so these are what we're going to use now um, let's just move this over go back to our perspective view and I'm just going to switch to default material just for now you'll notice in the floor I've created this recess and this is where the water's gathering and creating this puddle that she's splashing into. Now when using Bifrost, just like with any other particles, you need to create an emitter. And for this, if I unhide these two just to show you, we have a puddle emitter and all this is is a solid, solid object which is just the shape of the puddle. So basically just duplicate the geometry of the puddle and just extrude it to create a solid block. And this is where the particles are going to be emitting from. What we also have is this container. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to hide the floor as well. Like so, just so we can focus on these. So we have our emitter and we have this down here, which is our puddle container. So the emitter is going to emit the particles and then these are going to gather inside the container. If, you, if we zoom in a little bit here, you'll see, again, this is the same shape as the puddle, but we've also added a little lip on the side, and that's to help contain the uh, the bifrost particles. So let's let's see all this in um, in practice. So we're going to select the emitter, and we're just going to go to bifrost create liquid. So now that has just created, um, well it's just said to that uh, object, defined it as a, uh, a bifrost emitter, so now when we play the simulation the water is going to be emitting from this object itself. If we go into the outliner we can see these three objects here have been created as well so I'm just going to quickly move those up to the Bifrost Elements group just to keep things tidy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Bifrost Liquid node here and then I'm just going to press play. Now, you can see down here this is it calculating the Bifrost simulation. We've got yellow in the time slider here and this is the playback um, so these are all the frames that are going to be processed. You'll also just see down here, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that, stop the Bifrost um, simulation down here, go back to frame zero, and I'm going to reduce the time. Let's maybe make it 100. So you can see that a little bit clearer there. So these green areas here, and they'll only show up if you select the Bifrost liquid, these are what have been evaluated. So you notice because we stopped it, the green elements only go up to here. So let's go back and press play again and let's evaluate all 100 frames. So I'm going to select the liquid just so we can visualize what's being evaluated. And again this is why I turned off the rain and the hair just to speed up this process a little bit. Down here it tells you 
100 frames have been uh, submitted to be simulated and then this is how many it has done and successfully done and down here we have a percentage just so you can see that if you haven't got this selected you can also stop it by pressing stop now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video just for a second just while this finishes and does the full 100 frames so that's now complete and as you can see as we scrub through we can see the drops of water being emitted from our emitter and they're falling down like so now we have two initial problems first of all the water is almost like a tap so it's constantly flowing out of the emitter whereas we want the puddle to be almost just uh, a certain amount of water rather than a constant stream so we need to change that and we also need to make the particles collide with our puddle container here so first let's look at the uh, actual stream so let's have a look at some of the options down here well, I just remember I think it's in the emitter there we go so we select the emitter itself and here you'll just see Bifrost liquid continuous emission on so we'll just turn that off because we just want a set amount of particles to come be in the emitter what we'll also do is select the liquid select the uh, container and go to Bifrost add collider so now if we rewind and we press play because we've changed some settings it's got to re-evaluate there we go just make that a bit smaller now I won't let this run all the way through because it took a while before um, but hopefully even while it's evaluating we can click down here and just see almost catch up with it and already you can see a difference the emit the particles here are, the emitter has just emit one set uh, number of particles it's not a continuous stream anymore so as you can see the particles have come out of the emitter and they're all dropping down in one one lump and what we should see is that they come down here and hit the the container they'll collide with it and interact with it uh, as you would imagine so we'll just see if we can so there we go we can see it's collided with that and then it's spilling over the sides we just scrub through as you can see there you can just make out the drops so as you can see it's quite a nice simulation and it's also done pretty quickly so we scrub down again see how it hits there splashes out the sides so if we just stop this now let's go back here and press play should see the simulation a bit faster And that's looking pretty nice already so we we are starting to uh, define our puddle now and uh, what it uh, sort of well the objects in the scene that it's going to interact with so let's go back to frame zero and I'm going to drop this back down because we want the puddle to be inside the container now the problem we did have is the water was coming out of the sides let's just drop this down a little bit more like so now the container is not perfect let's just drop that like so so what we might do is let's just make the container a little bit wider Have 
got symmetry on. That's it. Turn symmetry off. Like so. So now if we let's hide the emitter. So all we're going to see is the actual water. Let's play again. And we'll just evaluate the first few frames just to see how the water's interacting with the container now. So remember, it's not falling anywhere, so it's not going to collide with the container and then splash out of the sides. It's more or less just sitting there. And as we scrub up here, we sh what we shouldn't see is much happening. Now we'll get some sort of seepage over the edge, but you'd expect that with a puddle. But that's a lot better. We've got some standing water and it's pretty much ready for us to then start to interact with. Because what we need to do next is take her foot and animate it so that it collides with the water and creates the splash. Sort of a realistic splash depending on how she's running and uh, how fast she's running. So let's stop this here. Let's just have a quick scrub through. So we can see it's starting to spill out over the edges there and if, if you don't want that, if you want it to be a bit more contained, we'll just select the top of the container, just lift that up a little bit more, like so, and all that will happen is when you re-evaluate it, because the edges are higher, the water should be stay contained inside the actual container itself. So I think what we'll do is we'll end this video here and in the next one we'll start to introduce uh, the animation of her foot uh, and how that interacts with the water just to get the splash um, that we require for this particular illustration.